welcome your faces back to the Pommy and Oz channel. Hope we're all doing really well. If you're new around here, please do me a solid. Hit that like button, hit that subscribe. It really helps the channel out and I can't thank you enough for the support. You can go a step further as well, become a member of the channel. That really helps the channel out. The things behind me, the content improvement, it allows me to focus on that. So join a wonderful community and help a brother out. And welcome back to the five lessons learned from our defeat versus Adelaide, which five was quite hard. There was probably about 34, but I've tried to condense it into the five that I think matter. Let me know in the comment section what you've learned and let's get straight into it. And the first part of call is Sammy Walsh. Jeepers, jeepers. He is a pretty good footballer, isn't he? I forgot how good he was and he led the team in ground ball gets, contested possessions, tackles, clearances, defensive half pressure acts, pressure acts and meters gained. Showcasing his elite two-way running, his ability to be defensively strong and his ability to be offensively strong. And this is without a shadow of a doubt Sam Walsh's midfield. This is the biggest changing point since it became Murphy's midfield when Judd retired. This is the handover process now. Cripper and Hewitt for me are the very similar type of players in what they do defensively and contested wise. I feel like when you look at our makeup of the midfield, it's still not quite there. But it is interesting to see Walsh do this because the way that Chera set up, I think, allows us to be a little bit sharper and a little bit more classy with the ball when it is released. But also, Walsh is that massive point of difference. For me, as a well-rounded, let's just say you graded every midfielder in every aspect of the game, for me, Walsh would be top three for all of them. Um all of them. He is that good. He is an incredible player and it really did showcase how good he is. He is a real diamond in this team and he is a player that he just baffles me. Coming back from that long out, straight into it, straight in, straight kicking ass and taking names. He's an incredible, terrific footballer and Sam Walsh, there's not much he can't do. I'd like to see him be a little bit more selfish sometimes with the ball inside 50. But that being said, it really is a point of difference that's needed. I feel like there's another point of difference needed in there, whether that's a Pom Cotter, whether that's a Billy Wilson as he gets his strength up, whether that's a Jackie Carroll, time will tell. But I do feel that when we play the two Ruckman, you did see that lack of cohesion. It would be really interesting because Kennedy went down back this week and I thought he did pretty well down there. I do feel like he's another point of difference. Is that too many contested players though? Probably. So that's why I'm looking at Jack, Jack Carroll to really go up the next level. He needs to be somewhere between Chera's class and Walsh's two-way running. And suddenly we've got a real, 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 real hard to beat midfield, which we already have already. Number two, the high defensive line and its ball movement it entails. And I thought this was really interesting this week. Carlton were well down on scores from turnover. And as soon as... Mr. Saad went off. You saw that run and carry and that makeup doesn't quite work. And what I mean by this is I think Newman is just purely there because of his hard work and his energy. And you need that type of player. So for me, he's stonewalled. Zach Williams, he went to that side role and did really well. But you saw that lack because Jordan Boyd isn't that guy. He's going to piece you apart with that. Carlton need a run another runner there. And we've mentioned him before in this video. Is it Pom Cotter? Is it Alex Chinkar? Is he the man to do that? That could be a real big wait and see for me. But that high defensive line is starting to cause us problems. And it, it requires incredibly hard two-way running. But also incredible nouse of when to go and when not to go. And you saw that the trap was laid there. They played Kemp deep with Fogarty. And he did very well when they did take that option. But Walker came short, and that was part of Carlton's plan. They knew that. They didn't expect the short kicks, and the short kicks pieced Carlton's high line apart. And we saw this against Freeman, and we saw this to a lesser extent against North Melbourne for patches. We definitely saw it against Richmond. Carlton have to find a way to negate this and maybe shelve this plan and maybe bring this in in more of a metronome effect throughout the quarters. Them short, sharp kicks, particularly them diagonal ones, really do get Carlton out of position and them short short kicks are killing us and it's about picking them up and that is going to be a real interesting thing. Do they look to float Akers and Hollands more deep in that 
and let Saad and Williams become more aggressive. We know Saad went down and that really did open that hole up between the arcs. It really did because we know Saad roams there and Mitch McGovern. Carlton need to find a way to negate that if Saad is out for long term, but also negate that in game. It's a real good high line, but when the forward pressure isn't quite there, which it wasn't in the first, it's way too easy to get into the core of that high defensive line. And that is a big thing there for the Blues, about being able to adapt in game plan. The game plan, to me, you can criticise it all you want, but it wasn't very good application-wise against Freeman. It certainly wasn't good against Adelaide. The system is keeping us in games. It's the execution. But these little bits of adaptation could really help Carlton go deep against the better teams. And the high defensive line, when the ball movement is long, is absolutely chaos. And it's about looking to be short. It's about looking to enact pressure in the right moments to negate that. Number three is Carlton's ability to get the ball inside 50. Currently ranking 15th in marks inside 50. But the two of our best players, Mackay and Kerno, rank top 10 for marks in 50. And this game showcased it. More inside 50s, more shots at goal. They lost the game. And the reason being, Carlton's shots at goal are, are chances. Are chances. You look at a lot of Harry's and Charlie's goals, they're from way out. They are way out inside 50. And this is an issue for Carlton. The game plan is get the ball forward, get the ball moving and get the tackles going. However, the big problem is these shots at goal are from nondescript areas. And the Blues have got to look at this. And there's a great, great passage of play where Blake Akers in the third was bursting in. There's an easy cross, easy switch to the corridor where there's two players unmarked. He went direct to the goal square, cat the ball is turned over, and lo and behold, a goal against on turnover. The Blues have got to start being more proficient from this area. And it's really interesting, watching the footage back in the second half, Elijah Hollands needs a pat on the back. His selfless running from the, the pocket forwards and being ignored is a huge case in point. And Carlton need to find a way of getting their high half forwards into the game. Matty Cottrell and Elijah Hollands work tirelessly in them leads and they're not looking. And if you watch Ben Keys, he plays high half forward. Look at where he's involved. He takes the mark 65 out. He bursts ahead. He gets the ball back. 40 from goal. Easier shot. And these are the case and point where Carlton can get better. Just because we've got two pillars doesn't mean you have to keep bombing it inside 50. They get away from each other. This week it was really case and point. They run into each other. They spoil each other. They need to create the separation and they need to isolate. We did such a good job against North Melbourne, against a weak side of isolating their key defenders with our keys by hitting short leads at 60 and then having it go quickly. The Blues have to negate this because they're not going to do it all the time. Just because Charlie and Harry can do contested marks, it isn't a sustainable model. So the Blues have to find a way of getting Matty Cottrell and lower the eyes and get these. It's really important for them moving forward. For balance around the key hot zones, for me, I feel like at the time, the Blues were scared to make some shifts in the game this week. And I don't want to be too critical because I think Voss has done really well. And I don't want to blame Pitonet. He, he's going to play. He's not going to say, no, nah, I'm not going to play. I don't think it suits the system. But you did notice there was a lack of point of difference. And there was two players here who I thought were just affected by this. Mark Kennedy was totally affected. He has a solid role. And this week, it was literally just fill in. Um, which I don't like. I feel like Matt Kennedy's ability on the ball is a point of difference for the Blues, particularly when the pressure's down and you need someone to get in there. He's going to be rambustious and I would love to see what a midfield four of Cripps, Hewitt, Kennedy and TDK would look like with Walsh coming from the wider pattern and making that direct run, which he did so well this week on release from stoppage and clearance. It's a real interesting pattern, but getting them balances right, particularly in the midfield and down back as well, trying to get the right amount of runners with the right amount of ball users is so important for the Blues because sometimes it feels like higgledy-piggledy and put together, and once you get on top, we really struggle. I feel like, obviously, with the injuries, I agree. Yes, the uh, injuries are a big part of it, but even with the injury list, there is still PODs on the list. And that is something that Carlton have got to be bold with. Is that a Cowan? I would love to see this week Zach Williams playing that halfback role and that aggressor. Moving Boyd to do the Williams job of being the kicker. 
and then putting Lockie Cowan there as that big booming exit. He's got a 70 meter kick on him. Them line clearances will be in a lot more of effective hot zone for Cowan's line because our exits this week were way too shallow when they were trying to clear it. And that is a big problem because it comes back with interest. And number five, the metronome effect of the game. I felt this week Cowan really got the game plan wrong. And they upped the ante in the fourth with the pressure. But against a side that is zero and four, the longer they're in the game, the more confidence they're going to build. The more confidence they're going to build, the more effective they're going to be. And the more ruthless and the more they're going to remember what it is to win. I felt that the fourth quarter, they did look a bit shaky. And then eventually credit to them. Adelaide senior players got them over the line with a bit of Sam Berry genius as well. With wonderful sub. But... I think that should have been flipped. The blue should have been looking to put that indecision and that indecisiveness in Adelaide from the off. And there was a lot of the Gold Coast game for me when Carlton won in this game where the blues weren't punished and it just kept giving them confidence until eventually the second half they ran over the top. Our system is a lot better than Gold Coast, but that is what I'm looking for at the moment. The next layer of this is knowing when to go full ball pressure, when to stand off, when to run and handball, when to kick to safety, when to retain ball possession. It's still a work in progress. You can see it because I feel like they manage that game really poorly for the opposition. And that's not taken any way from Adelaide. Adelaide were terrific and full put, fair play. I'm not sitting here and saying we should have won it. You, you put the side away when you have. This is Fremantle versus us. And we're Fremantle. We should have put the side away. With them scoring shots, should have been done. Should have been enacted. But the Blues have got to find a way of when to go and when not to go. And that is something that I'm watching in the next five-week block against some seriously good opposition. A lot of work to do. We're not the finished article. We know that. We had a good start results-wise. Now it's about getting the processes right over this next five weeks to hit the ground running and really march our way into finals. The Blues have got to look at here a minimum of two wins out of the next five I'm thinking three, and that's going to be a tough ask, but it's not beyond them. If they get these five things right for me and get this equality going in the halves of the ground, they should be all right, even with the personnel coming in. I have faith, and I'm going to be cheering them hard. Ladies and gentlemen, that is the five takeouts. Let me know how you saw it. I love the conversation. Give me your five takeaways, and we'll have a bit of a chat about it in the comments. Peace, love, and light. Palm out. Rolling up over black Cadillac High heel boots and a sexy body full of tats Baby's bad, oh baby's elephant